Hi, it's Dan. I'm glad to be back with you and I have some thoughts about some of what I've heard from other folks and their uh, initial pieces and responses and I also would like to take this time to think about uh, perhaps a framework or a frame of reference that I'm trying to think of for the future in how I deal with technology and education uh, and think about it in the context of these words that we've been talking about, namely trust, privacy, openness, etc. All of those words, as you've been hearing, are really nuanced. All of them are uh, deep, complicated, and uh, really kind of difficult, not just to define in some ways, but to make coherent in this uh, new ecosystem of education, media, uh, law, and in the general online space uh, that we all inhabit to one degree or another, or which we all will inhabit to one degree or another. Uh, I was struck by uh, many of the things I've heard in particular. I, I think Corey's uh, combi uh, com combination of thoughts on things like control and privacy and, and uh, copyright, which uh, really all begin to meld together along with surveillance and other aspects. Uh, we, we do need to think about these in a holistic way and I was uh, very much impressed by the idea that if we chip away at any one of them, and I mean by improving uh, the process in any one of them, we can make progress in all of them. I hope that's true because it's certainly been shown that as we chip away from privacy and when we add surveillance, these things all get worse kind of in lockstep. So I want to think a little bit further about a couple of things. and. Uh, ask some questions partly about the whole purpose of education uh, for the people being educated and for the uh, other group of people who have uh, a direct uh, role in what happens to the people who are being educated and in that I'm talking about uh, future employers, future colleagues, uh, future partners, etc because they have a stake in how all this works and we have to think about how they are going to be served or not served by the system that we put in place. There are a couple of issues that come up immediately in thinking about uh, education in the formal sense and uh, there are two words I'll throw out. One is accountability. How do we as people who are in the education business uh, be accountable to the students? And uh, that's also worth asking from the other direction. How do we make what the work that the students do accountable uh, really to themselves? This is for them, not for us. The second word which is related is credential. A whole major part of why people go to university is to get a credential. Uh, it's to get that diploma, that, that piece of paper uh, that says, yeah, she went here, she got these grades uh, and these honors and use that as you will, and we're saying that both to her and to her future employers. Uh, but that's related to accountability because we have to make sure that it's true or that it can be verified. And the process of the verification is one of the reasons we get into the uh, anti-privacy trap, into the surveilling of the students trap, and I do think it's a trap for all of us. But we, if we're going to provide accountability for education and in the United States and other countries, there's accountability to other people like government, uh, which supplies a lot of the money to the taxpayers in general who are paying for a lot of education and to parents and others. Uh, it can't be completely random if we're going to be accountable. So as I think about this, I want to suggest that we have uh, an opportunity as education starts uh, 
changing, I think, rather quickly and will change in coming years uh, because of the tools that we're now able to use. I want to imagine, uh, in my mind anyway, a system that would have some principles. And it would begin with these principles. And, and uh, when I use the word you in this next several sentences, I'm referring to the student. And here are those principles. Number one, you own your words. That's uh, actually something that I got from an online community established in the 1980s called The Well, uh, which uh, was famous in the group that uh, used it a lot and a few others as one of the really wonderful online communities and conversations. When you logged on to The Well, it said you own your own words. And that was a pretty profound statement, not just from a, a, an integrity standpoint, but from a copyright standpoint. They were not claiming they owned anything except the servers and the software that used to, to, to put it up. Okay, second principle is you own your own data. Uh, that's, again, I think something that we should try to make fundamental uh, to the extent possible. Some data can't be owned by the students, but I think we should be biased toward a system where it is. A third principle would be not just do you own your, uh, your own words and data, we're going to make sure you can control it. We're not going to give you a blob of uh, bits and say, you figure out to do that. We're going to help create tools that put the control of it more uh, firmly in your hands as a student and later on. Uh, I don't have a particular architecture in mind for this, but I think it's possible and we should be thinking about doing it. And the fourth principle, uh, which kind of comes out of those three in some ways, is that Privacy will be built in from the start, not added on as an afterthought. And uh, that's actually a principle that does go into uh, education software now, but it's privacy of a particular kind, at least in the U.S., uh, where it's aimed at uh, complying with a federal law about not leaking student data to unauthorized places. It, is still very much controlled by the school and in, in the case of third-party stuff they have some element of control too but uh, I'd, I'd bake it in, in a more uh, serious way for the student as opposed to for me the teacher. Now what I've just described of course is absolutely not available from uh, places like uh, Google or uh, to a large degree, Facebook. Uh, Facebook doesn't claim that it owns your words, but sure, is, you know, it does control them. Google uh, get actually takes more ownership of everything because uh, you're, what you're searching on, which you're, how you're using it, is creating data that Google then uses. Google's entire business is built on using the signals that we give to create. Uh, new and interesting services for them that will make money for them. I don't know why this isn't available for education. I think we could create a system where part of the cost of, of education is that privacy, trust, openness in the software sense are built in to the system and transparency, a whole bunch of things. I'd, Again, I don't have a specific architecture in mind, but I have a thought, and it came out of a conversation the other day with someone who's looking at the Internet of Things, the idea that everything we touch is going to have uh, a microprocessor in it and be connected to digital networks, uh, which scares the hell out of me in many ways, but could be very useful. We need an architecture there and a system whereby if I put a, a smart thermostat in my house, I don't want the data going to Google or anyone else. I want it in my control, and maybe I'll share it with people who are part of a, a 
community who share in a very specific, uh, non-invasive and uh, very much non-identifying way to the individual user. Easier said than done. I think that would be interesting to apply to students as well. The credential question comes back in a way that I, I think we have to just ask very much outright. We, we can award a credential, but if I'm hiring somebody, what I care about is much more than the credential, though it may be an interesting data point for me. I care about whether the person can do the job or shows the capacity to learn how to do the job and to do things that I don't do well because I don't want to hire people who do what I do well. I want them to do other things well. So maybe the thing we're going to head toward instead of this credentialing system will be where people show they can do the job and that's the real credential and that, that helps preserve the student's privacy as we go. Uh, you know, education is being reformulated as we speak here and I think some of these principles are getting uh, thought through fairly well by uh, a subset of people in the education world. I hope that more will take this on, more bias toward open, more bias toward privacy, and more bias toward the student being in control of his or her own life, of which education is a key part and one that will be even more so going forward. Uh, it's not too late to do this in a way that's, uh, that does honor those principles of openness and trust. And I hope that's where we end up in the future. Thanks.